Hey everyone, Leander here, and today we're going to learn how to style a web page using CSS. So this video is for complete beginners in CSS. You do have to have some basic knowledge of HTML, so if you need that, I recommend checking out my previous video, How to Make a Simple Web Page Using HTML. Okay, so here is the very simple web page that I made in the previous video. And here is the code for that page. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It's what we use to give a web page its style. And CSS code works right along with HTML code to do this. In fact, we can put our CSS right into our HTML document. Traditionally, CSS code went in the head element of the document. but People have found that actually pages tend to load faster if you put the CSS code at the bottom of the body. So that's what we're going to do. To insert our CSS code, we use the style tags. And all of our CSS code goes between these two tags. The first thing I'd like to change about our web page is I'd like to make our heading larger. So, the tag for our heading is h1. So down here in style, I type h1, and then I type these curly brackets. And inside, we type font size with hyphens, colons, and let's make it 90 pixels, so 90px. And at the end, we have these semicolons. Save that, refresh, and now our heading is bigger. Let's also make the font size for our paragraph elements larger. So we just go down and add a P for paragraph and font size. How about 20 pixels? That's better. And maybe I'll delete this extra break here. We can do a lot of other cool things with the font. For example, we can change the color. So I can change the color of our heading to, for example, blue. Now it's blue. I can also change the text alignment by doing text align. And for example, I could center our heading like that. Before we go on, I'd like to give you a quick tip about these semicolons. The semicolons are really important because they tell the browser where each attribute ends so that it knows where new attributes begin. So let's see what happens if I, for example, forget these semicolons. The browser can't correctly read my code anymore from my heading, and so my styles don't show up. So if you're writing CSS and it's not showing up, it could be because you've forgotten semicolons somewhere. So let's put those semicolons back on. We can also change the font family of text. Let's do that for our heading. Font family. And let's go with a really kind of weird font family here, just so that you can really see it. And there we go. Now I'm using the papyrus font family for my heading. And for our paragraph elements, I'm going to make the font family Tahoma. Okay. So far, we've been directly assigning attributes to whole HTML elements. So every paragraph element I write is going to have these attributes. But what if, for example, I just want to change the style of this paragraph element? What if I just want to change the style of this one, but not the others? In that case, I need to create a class. So here's how we do that. Inside of the opening tag here, I type class equals, and then in double quotations, I write the name of the class I want to create. And I'm going to call it EMPH for emphasis. 
but you can call it whatever you want. Next, I go down inside of our CSS code and I type the same thing, EMPH, but I put a dot at the beginning. And this dot indicates to the browser that we're now talking about a class here, not an HTML element or something else. And then we put our curly brackets. And now, for example, if I want high to be bold, I can write font weight bold. Save that. And now, just high is bold, not the other paragraph elements. I can also make it italic if I want. Font style italic. And now this paragraph element is bold and italic. Now, whenever I want to give an element these attributes, all I have to do is add the emph class. So, for example, uh, if I wanted to also make this paragraph element uh, bold and italic, I can just go to that element in my HTML code and add class equals inf. And now this is bold and italic too. But what if I only want to make certain words emphasized? So, for example, this sentence here. This is my first web page. What if I wanted to only make first bold and italic? Well, before I do that, I'm going to take off our emph class from this element and from this one. And now, to only change the style of the word first, we can use the span tag. So we type span, then after first, we close the tag, and if we save that and refresh, we see that there's no change. But if we add class inf to our span, now we see that first is bold and italic. I'm going to add a little bit more to this sentence. And maybe I'll put this using CSS part in another span, also using the emph class. Okay, so far we've only been using CSS to change the style of text, but we can use it for a lot more than that. For example, uh, I have this image here and I'm controlling the size of this image using HTML. So it's right here and I'm giving it a width of 500 pixels. If I delete this part, we see that the actual image is really huge, but I can control the width of this image using CSS. For example, I can go down here in our style and add IMG, curly brackets, width, 500 px. And now our image is once again 500 pixels wide, only now I'm using CSS to do that. We can also use CSS to change the background color of an element. Let's say we wanted to change the background color of the entire page. Well to do that we'd be changing the background color of the body. So we go down here into style and we add body. Next we add background color and let's make it green. Wow, that is ugly. How about a different color? That's even uglier. No. Nope. Definitely not. So you see, we have a bit of a problem with our colors. We don't have many choices. For example, what if I wanted to make the background color the same color as the sky in my picture? Well, it's not really blue, and it's not green. It's close to turquoise, 
but not close enough. If we want more control over our colors, we're going to have to stop using English words for colors and instead use something called the hexadecimal system. Now hexadecimal is a big word, but don't let it scare you. Hex means six, des means 10, six and 10 make 16. And so in the hexadecimal system, you indicate how much of each primary color you want using 16 different levels. Let me show you what I mean. First, we start with a hash mark. Then we use three digits. I'll start with zeros. This means add zero amount of each of the primary colors. So what color is this going to give us for our background? Let's save it and take a look. So zero of each color gives us black. If I make this first digit a five, you can see that we've increased the amount of red in our background. If I raise the number to nine, the red gets brighter. But what if we want to make the red brighter than nine? How can we do that? Can we use 10? Let's try. Nope, that doesn't work. Instead, we use A. And above that, B, C, D, E, and F for the highest amount. So there are 16 levels of color from 0 to F. That's the hexadecimal system. Now, if I make this 0 and I make the middle digit F, we get green. So what do you think this color will be if my last digit is F and the other two are 0? That's right, it's blue. So each digit corresponds to a different primary color of light, red, green, and blue. So we can use different amounts of each color to mix our own custom colors. So let me try now to use the hexadecimal system to match our background color to the color of the sky in this image. A quick glance tells me that this color is between green and blue. So I'm going to start with full color for green and blue, F and F. From here, I'll try to tweak the levels of each of these colors to get it closer and closer to the color of our sky. We're pretty close now to the color of our sky, but we can actually get even closer by adding another digit on for each of our primary colors. I think this is about as close as we can get. So that's how we can create a background color for our page. But what if instead of a color, we want an image. We already have this Fuji image, so why don't we try to use that and make that our background image. Before I do that, I'm just going to delete it from the HTML here. And now in our CSS for the body, I'm going to add background, colons, URL, parentheses, and inside of double quotations, I'm going to type the name of our Fuji image, which is fuji.png, save it, and there it is. And that looks kind of neat, but it's also a little bit weird. Let me show you what I mean. I'm zooming out now. Take a look at that. The image repeats. If we don't want our image to repeat like this, we have to add no repeat with that hyphen. And now the image doesn't repeat. Notice also though that our background color is gone. That's because you can only choose to have either a background color or a background image for an element. So I'm just going to delete the background color. Now 
This is not really what I want to do with our page, but it does give me an idea. Maybe we can use a part of this Mount Fuji image and make a banner that includes that image as the background and also includes our heading and maybe also a link. So how would we do that? Well first I want to take this link and move it up here on the top because I want that to be inside of our banner. So here's our link and I don't need the paragraph tags. I'm just going to take the link, get rid of those tags, and I'll put it up here above the heading. Now we need to think of a way to put this Mount Fuji image behind our heading and this link but not behind this other content. So how would we do that? To do this we should divide these two areas of our page into divisions using the div tag. So we make a division here for our banner and we put our heading and the link in there and we make another division down here for the rest of our content. And if I refresh the page everything looks the same but it will look different very soon. First let's get rid of this background for the body and now we want to give that background to this first div here that has our heading and our link. To do that we could give our div a class, a new class, but classes are usually used for things that you're going to repeat on your page over and over again, but we're only going to have one banner at the top of the page. So let's use an ID instead. And so this is how we do that. We type ID in the tag, double quotes, and we'll give it the ID banner. And then down here, we add our banner ID. And to indicate to the browser that this is an ID, we use the hash mark in curly brackets. And in here, we'll put the background image. And now only the div with the banner ID has the Fuji background image. But it doesn't look quite right. Don't worry, we're going to fix that. But before we do, I want to tell you a little bit more about IDs. IDs are used with unique elements on your page. Elements that will never repeat. Such as our banner. We're only going to have one banner on our page. So we're giving this div an ID banner. Now this is different from, for example, when we want to add emphasis to certain words because we might use that again and again. So in that case we use the class. So IDs are for unique elements that never repeat, whereas classes are for elements that you're going to maybe use again and again on the same page. All right, let's try to make our banner look a little better. One way we can make it look better is by increasing the height. So let's make the height 400 pixels. That's a little better. But I think we're actually going to have to edit our image a little bit to make things look right. To do that, we need an image editor. And if you're using Windows, you have one that came free with your system called Paint. I'm not going to use Paint. I'm going to use a better program called Paint.net. And Paint.net is similar to Photoshop, only it's free. So if you don't have a good image editor, I highly recommend Paint.net. I'll put the download link below this video. So I'll just quickly edit our image in Paint.net. Okay, so I've edited our image and renamed it Banner. 
So let's try that. This looks much better, but we still have a bit of a problem. Watch what happens when I expand our window. Our heading goes off of our background image. It would be really nice if we could just get this background image to just continue on going to the right. However, I don't want to just repeat this mountain over and over again. What would be nice is if we could actually get the sky to extend all the way across this page. How could we do that? Well, first, we need to make another division to contain our banner. I'm going to call this division Banner Container. And our Banner Division goes inside of our Banner Container Division. Now we can adjust the background of our Banner Container to get our sky to go across the page. One way we can do this is by trying to add a background color that's the same color as the sky. Remember that background color we made earlier on? Let's try that. This looks okay, but we can actually do better. Here's how. We can take a piece of this sky from this image and repeat it over and over and over again for the background of the banner container. Let's try that. Okay, so I've taken a piece of the sky and I've named it sky.png and I've made it the background of our banner container. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad, but we still have these little white margins around our banner. And I'd like to take those off. So how do we do that? Well, these margins belong to the body of our document. So, for example, if I want to take off this top margin here, I go into our CSS and into the body and I just type margin top zero. It's gone. Next, I could do margin left and then margin right and then margin bottom if I wanted to. But there's actually a faster way. Uh, what we can do is type just margin and zero, 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 zero. Save that. And now all the margins around the body are set to zero. And just for your information, this digit refers to the top margin. This one refers to the right margin. This is the bottom, and this is the left margin. So it goes around clockwise. Next, I'd like to do something with this link up here. First, how about we make the font size bigger? And let's just make it 20 pixels like everything else. That's better. Next, Let's get rid of this underline. And to do that, we type text decoration none. There we go. Now, I'd like to move the link over to the right side of our page. So maybe I can just change the text alignment to right. Text align. Right. Let's try that. Hmm. It didn't work. Why not? Well, 
I think it's easier to see if I change the background color of the link. So let me change it to orange. So this little area here, that's the entire link area. So actually, it is aligned to the right, but it's aligned to the right inside of its little area. So what we need to do is we need to put this link inside of a, an area that stretches from one side of the page to the other side. In other words, we need to make a special division just for our link. Okay, so let's go up to where our link is, create a new div, we'll give it the ID link container. And we'll put our link inside of that, just like that. And now, to make things easy to see, I'm going to give our link container a different background color. So I'll go down here, link container, green. Next, I'm going to make the text alignment for our link container right. I'll just cut this part from our link CSS and just paste it down here. And now our link is aligned to the right. And all text that goes into our link container is going to be aligned to the right, just like our link. Next, our link is kind of jammed up into this corner. I'd like to give it some padding. Here's how we can do that. In the style for our links, we add padding. And if we wanted to, we could just do padding for the right or the left, bottom, etc. But we can also use the trick we used with margin. So we can just write padding, and then a number for the top padding, a number for the right padding, bottom, and left. And for any number besides zero, we need to have px for pixels. And here's how that looks. Now let's add the same amount of padding to our link container. Next, let's get rid of the orange background color for our link. And make the font color white. Now, instead of this ugly green background for our link container, let's try a special trick with CSS. For this trick, we're going to use another color system called the red, green, blue alpha system. Just like with the hexadecimal system that we learned previously, in this system, we use numbers to indicate how much of each primary color we want. The numbers we use in this system are from 0 to 256. So 256 means the full amount of that color. So if we do this, 256 for first color, that's red, full red, and 0 green, 0 blue. And I'll explain alpha in a second, but for now we'll set alpha to 1. If I do this, this means full red, no green, no blue, and an alpha 1. What does this look like? It looks like this. So our link container is completely red. Now if I set red to 0, green 0, and I make blue 256, keep alpha at 1, now our link container is completely blue. And of course, if I set blue to zero, now we have zero of each primary color. So the background color for our link container is now black. Everything we've done so far are things we could have done using the hexadecimal system. But now let's talk about alpha. So the alpha value indicates the opacity of our color. One means full opacity. An alpha value of zero, on the other hand, 
indicates zero opacity. What does that look like? Let's take a look. It's completely transparent. We can't see it at all. How about if I set it to 0.5? Now it's half transparent, half opaque. This is a little too dark, but how about an alpha value of 0.1? There, now we have a nice shadow across the top of our banner for our link container. Looks nice. Now, let me show you a trick we can do with our link. We can actually change the way our link looks when we hover over it. This is how we do that. We type a colons hover. Now, in these curly brackets, we can add some attributes that we want to show when we hover our pointer over our link. One thing that I'd like to do when we hover our cursor over the link is have that underline come back. And here's how we can do that. Text decoration, underline. Now, when we hover our cursor over the link, our underline appears. We can do something even cooler with our link when we hover over it by taking this code we've written for the background color of our link container and pasting it in our style for links when we hover over them. Now, when I hover over the link, we see that the shadow we've created for a link container gets darker around our link. Pretty cool, huh? So our banner is looking pretty good now, but the content below our banner still needs some work. For one thing, it's too far over to the left. One thing we could do to fix this problem is center this content. First, we need to go to that division. Here it is. And let's give it an ID. We'll call it content. And then down here, we can try to center the text for that division. Let's see how that looks. This looks okay, but actually, I'd like to keep this text aligned to the left if possible. So here's something else we can try. We could try changing the margin on the left side. Margin left and how about 200 pixels. That looks pretty good. But what happens when we expand the window? The content down here doesn't move at all. I'd like to keep this content toward the middle of the page. So how can we do that? Before I show you how, I'm going to change the background color of our content just to make things easy to see. Now if we expand our window, it looks like this. Let's take off that left margin. Now, our page looks like this. Watch what happens when I set the width of our content to 50%. Our content division is now always 50% the width of our window. Check this out. Let's try using percentages for our margins too. So for our left margin, I'm going to set it to 25%. Watch what happens now. No matter the size of our window, 
the content division is now always 50% the width of the window. And the margin on the left is always 25%, which means the margin on the right is also always 25%. So this way, we keep our content right in the middle of the page. I think we can get rid of this orange background color now. Okay, our page is really taking shape. There's just one last thing I'd like to do. And that is change the color of our heading to white. And now our web page has style. To see just how far we've come, let's compare our current web page to the page we had before we started using CSS. This is how our page used to look, and this is how our page looks now. So congratulations, you now know CSS. Thanks for watching guys, and see you next time.